Number one, give up the past and focus on the future. And think of it like you're going on a road trip. When you're in the car, how much time do you spend looking in the rearview mirror versus looking at the road ahead? And is the GPS telling you where you've been or is the GPS focused on where you're going? The same applies in our lives. Now I know the past is a very compelling place to want to focus because it's real, it happened. And on top of that, we are reminded of it all the time with the people we spend our time with, um, songs that we hear on the radio, um, places we go, people we talk to, it all keeps regurgitating the same thing over and over again, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. But the problem is when you're living in the past, there's no room for growth. Growth can only happen from the present moment with an intention towards the future. And here's the thing, the past exists only in our minds. It's already been written. So anything that's already happened, all that we have left of it is the thoughts about it. That's why two people who had the exact same experience can have very different versions of that same experience. The future also only exists in our mind, but it hasn't happened yet. So we have influence over that. I'm not saying that we completely disregard our past. Sometimes there are amazing nuggets of truth in there and wisdom and happy memories, which we want to keep with us, obviously. But there's a fine line between living in the past and taking the lessons from it and applying it towards the future, which is exactly what I'm trying to say here. So I know that the future can be uncertain and that tends to cause a lot of worry and anxiety. We don't like uncertainty. It's a natural human condition. But here's the thing, within that uncertainty, lies both opportunity and possibility to create something new or different or whatever your goals are. So the first thing that we need to give up in 2019 for a happier 2020 is living in the past and instead focusing on the future. The second thing we need to give up for a happier 2020 is our resistance to our negative emotion. So for some reason, we tend to think that we need to be happy all the time. And that's not how it is. However, I can understand why we think that because when we look on Instagram and Facebook, everyone else's life is happy all the time. So when we experience some kind of negative emotion like fear, anxiety, worry, stress, loneliness, pain, we tend to want to push it away and resist it and distract ourselves with any number of things. And we all have that thing we distract ourselves with. You know what it is. So instead of doing that, what I recommend is when the negative emotion shows up, hit the pause button and just sit with it. Negative emotion shows up in our bodies as a sensation. So either our throats will be constricted, maybe we'll sweat, have shortness of breath, our heart, heart will race. For me, I get a really deep, heavy feeling in the pit of my stomach. And that's how I know that I'm having some kind of negative emotion. And instead of distracting myself and trying to avoid it, when I listen to it, eventually what happens is I find out that I'm being guided to pay attention to something in my life that needs my attention and so i tend to have a much easier time getting out of the negative emotion versus when i compound it and compounding it looks something like this we get angry that we're angry we get sad that we're feeling sad we get stressed out that we're stressed out and we're so anxious that we have anxiety and what that is is a snowball effect and it just gets worse and worse and to the point that the negative emotion is overwhelming and we don't know what to do with it and we're living our lives in huge stress. So for Happier 2020, what I recommend, sit with the negative emotion, don't resist it, acknowledge it, listen to it. All negative emotion is, is a sign that you're human. What helps is when we know how to process it versus distracting ourselves. And the third thing we can remove in 2020 for a happier year is our need to please others. So people pleasing is something that a lot of us do. And you know, on the surface, it looks like we're being very kind and generous and we're very nice people and we just do things for others. And that's great, but if it's coming from a place of doing it in order to get something in return and that something is someone else's validation, then it's actually coming from a place of inner lack and insecurity and it's ego-based. You're pretty much just doing something so that someone else will validate your ego. And so there's a subtle difference between that and something that is much better, which I call uh, being of service. Now, when you're in a place of being of service, it looks the same, kindness, generosity, you're helping others, but it's from a place of having an innate inner gift that you want to share with others. It comes from a place of abundance instead of lack. 
and you're not doing it to get accolades or, or to get anyone to validate you. You're doing it because you have this gift that you just want to share and you want to help either another person, a family member, uh, the community you live in, uh, or even just society at large. So there is a subtle difference there. And, and it has been proven scientifically that when we act in a place of service and we are serving others, it is one of the easiest, fastest ways to increase our sense of joy, to increase our connectivity, and to increase our happiness. So those are three things that uh, we can do uh, to have a happier 2020. There will be a few more that I'll be sharing on my blog, uh, wellismo.com, and you can check out the rest of them there. Thank you.